Okay. Um, good evening, class. As your professor tonight, I am in charge with explaining to you the relevant jurisprudence. Moreover, let us also examine the trend as regards this so-called right to information on matters of public concern. So as a nation, where are we heading? This is one of the questions that we are going to answer tonight. So let us first begin with the case of um, Bara 7941 versus Comelec. By the way, the format that we used here is still in the Q&A format. Um, you know what, as a law student, I just don't read paragraphs. In order to internalize them, I often rephrase um, paragraphs and explanations into ones that begin with questions and then answer them um, based on the explanation given. In that way, I only extract the main points. The concept will be internalized and obviously it is an additional training on how to answer and address directly the questions. Well, I am not suggesting that you, sh you should try this, but um, I am saying that this works for me. Okay, so Bara 7941 versus Comelec. Here's the question. Comelec refused to reveal the names of the nominees for party list seats. Valid? The answer is no. The refusal of the Comelec to reveal the names of the nominees for party list seats violates the right of the people to information on matters of public concern. It also violates the rule on transparency in Article 2, Section 27. So the right to information is a public right where the real parties in interest are the public or the citizens to be precise. And for every right of the people recognized as fundamental lies a corresponding duty on the part of those who govern to respect and protect that right. So this is the essence of the Bill of Rights in a constitutional regime. Without a government's acceptance of the limitations upon it by the Constitution in order to uphold individual liberties, without an acknowledgement on its part of those duties exacted by the rights pertaining to the citizens, the Bill of Rights becomes a sophistry. By weight of jurisprudence, any citizen can challenge any attempt to obstruct the exercise of his right to information and may seek its enforcement by mandamus. And since every citizen by the simple fact of his citizenship possesses um, the right to be informed, objections on ground of locus standi are ordinarily unavailing. So like all constitutional guarantees, however, the right to information and its companion right of access to official records are not absolute, as articulated in the case of Legaspi, as what have been explained by um, the lawyer that we interviewed from the Civil Service Commission. The people's right to know is limited to matters of public concern and is further subject to such limitation as may be provided by law. So this is very important. Similarly, the policy of full disclosure is confined to transactions involving public interest and is subject to reasonable conditions prescribed by law. Two, there is also the need of preserving a measure of confidentiality on some matters, such as military, trade, banking, and diplomatic secrets or those affecting national security. Now, as to the next case, we have here um, Rappler Incorporated versus Bautista. Question. The online news agency Rappler Incorporated sued Comelec Chair Bautista for breach of contract in disallowing the former to stream online the coverage of the 2016 presidential and vice presidential debates. So does Rappler Incorporated have a cause of action against Chair Bautista? Yes, aside from the fact that Chair Bautista clearly breached an express stipulation of the MOA allowing Rappler um, to stream online the coverage of the debates, the presidential and vice presidential debates are held primarily for the benefit of the electorate to assist the electorate in making informed choices on election day. Through the conduct of the national debates um, among presidential and vice presidential candidates, the electorate will have the opportunity to be informed of the candidates' qualifications and track records platforms and programs, and their answers to significant issues of national concern. I hope you forgive my puppy. <laughs> okay, so the political nature of the national debates and the public's interest in the wide availability of the information for the voters' education certainly justify 
allowing the debates to be shown or streamed in other websites for wider dissemination. Now let's move to the next case. We have Sereno versus Committee on Tariff and Related Matters. Here's the question. This is not um, Maria Lourdes Sereno, okay? This is Mario Jose Sereno. So the petitioner filed in his capacity as a citizen and as a stakeholder in the industry involved in importing petrochemicals filed a mandamus petition also to compel the co committee on tariff and related matters to provide him a copy of the minutes of its 2005 meeting as well as to provide copies of all official records documents papers and government research data used as basis for the issuance of eo 486 um, which lifted the suspension of the tariff reduction schedule on petrochemicals sereno basis action actually on the constitutional right to information on matters of public concern, as stated in Section 7, of course, of our Constitution, and the state's policy of full public disclosure. Um, will the petition prosper? The answer is no. The state's policy of full public disclosure is restricted to transactions involving public interest and is tempered by reasonable conditions prescribed by law. So two requisites must concur before the right to information may be compelled by writ of mandamus. Firstly, the information sought must be in relation to matters of public concern or public interest. And secondly, it must not be exempt by law from the operation of the constitutional guarantee. It is to be noted that a while ago, as, as um, seen from the video, there are actually exceptions to the rule on the right to information. So the information sought by Sereno are classified as a closed door cabinet meeting by virtue of the CTRM's composition and the nature of its mandate dealing with matters of foreign affairs, trade, and policy making. A president and those who assist him must be free to explore alternatives in the process of shaping policies and making decisions and to do so in a way many would be unwilling to express except privately. Without doubt, therefore, ensuring and promoting the free exchange of ideas among the members of CTRM, which, is tasked, which are tasked to give tariff recommendations to the president, um, were truly imperative. Okay, I, I repeat, ensuring and promoting the free exchange of ideas among the members of CTRM tasked to give tariff recommendations to the president were truly imperative. I hope you will excuse my puppy and I really cannot re-record um, this presentation again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Shh, quiet, please. Okay. <laughs> Let me pause for a while. Um, okay, so I'm back. I hope um, he's okay. So as to the next case, um, we have the next case. Um, request for copies of the SALN and personal data sheet or curriculum vitae of the justices of the Supreme Court. This is an admin matter actually promulgated on 2012. So here's the question. The court received two letters requesting for copies of SALN and the personal data sheet or the curriculum vitae of its justices for the year 2008 for the purposes of updating their database of information on government officials. Other requests for copies of SALN and other personal documents of the justices of the court, Court of Appeals and Sandigan, Sandigan Bayan were filed. Can the court allow the release of copies of SALN and other personal documents of the incumbent justices? So the answer is no. The court may deny requests for certified copies of SALN of all incumbent justices of the SC and Court of Tax Appeals if it is lacking sufficient basis. It should not be forgotten that invoking one's constitutional right to information must not set aside the need to preserve the integrity and independence of the judiciary. So it must be invoked if under the circumstances, it would not result in endangering, diminishing, or destroying the independence and security of the members of the ju judiciary in the performance of their judicial functions or expose them to revenge for adverse decisions. So now let's go to the next part of this presentation. What's the trend? How about the famous FOI bills? 
filed in Congress. So here's the most recent update. The 18th Congress actually filed the People's Freedom of Information Act of 2020. However, as we can see from the public website provided by the 18th Congress, the same is still pending in the committee. Um, now, um, it is to be emphasized that the FOI bill that would have fleshed out the constitutional provision was first proposed by the late Senator Raul Ruco 32 years ago, or more or less 32 to 35 years ago, has since been refiled and stonewalled 10 times by Congress. 10 times by Congress. However, while this seemed unavailing on the part of, the con of Congress, the free access to information has been realized under the executive branch. In a move towards transparency and accountability in official government acts, transactions, and decisions, President Duterte signed EO number no. two on 2016, operationalizing the constitutional provisions on the right to information in the executive branch, including government-owned and controlled corporations, and state universities and colleges. Local government units are likewise enjoined to observe and be guided by the order. It is hoped that this would stimulate the public to take part in governance and help in the fight against corruption. While the EO um, expressly provides a legal presumption in favor of access to information, it also emphasized that the right is subject to certain exceptions and limitations. So here is so what you can see here um, is actually the list you know, of the inventory of exceptions as provided by Salvador uh, Medialdia, the secretary of President Duterte. For instance, um, national security and the protection of an individual's right to privacy um, remain a foremost concern. So abuse is certainly a possibility, but it should not be a deterrent to the realization of the objectives of the order. To keep it relevant, the inventory of exceptions will be periodically updated for everyone's guidance. Um, this EO can actually be downloaded online via the official gazette, as well as its exceptions. As a matter of fact, um, nowadays, information can easily be accessed by just reaching out to the EFOI portal. This is an online platform which was recently put in place as an alternative avenue to FOI and to, to ease the dissemination of information. Currently, it has 30 participating agencies, um, including, among others, the Department of Finance, Budget and Management, Department of Health, DOJ, the Philippine National Police, the PAO, and even the National Archives of the Philippines. So the EFOI site allows visitors to browse requests, um, showing the name of the requester, the purpose, and even the status and the result of the request. So even the documents or information requested by the public and granted or provided by the concerned government agency are made available online for other people to view subject to file size restrictions and the condition that it does not contain personal information of the requester. Uh, well, the, the trend nowadays is not only in the national setting, even in local setups. Um, the, the new Manila mayor, Francisco um, Isco Moreno, I know he's famous, first official, uh, official act was to issue an open governance policy in his administration under which all official issuances in the city must be published in its media platforms within 24 hours after issuance and or approval. Covered are executive orders, appointments, ordinances, as well as project approval and activities. The most striking component of Moreno's order is, uh, is this. Um, all procurement and bidding transactions, contract signings, and official meetings of city officers will henceforth be live streamed on social media platforms. Uh, actually, during his administration, each department um, under his office is also required to appoint its own social media officers who will engage the public and crowdsource feedback on issues relevant to the Manila City Hall constituency. Now, in um, 2018, a similar bold initiative was championed by then councillor and now Pasig City Mayor Vico Soto, uh, Mayor 
Victor Vico Soto. So ordinance number 37 or the Pasig Transparency Mechanism Ordinance allows the public, um, allows the disclosure of city public records, including financial documents and contracts upon request by ordinary citizens. The law effectively made Pasig the first city in Metro Manila to have its, its own version of the FOI law. So to end, we say that these developments have been a good start. Hopefully, we can look forward to a day where we can have a strong FOI law, which will cover the entire branches of government. In the end, participation is key as progress is a shared responsibility. Our group, Group 5, believes that we owe it to ourselves to be in informed, um, vigilant, and empowered. So this ends our reporting. I hope you have learned a lot. Thank you very much for listening. So stay tuned because the quiz will be given to you by my partner, Mr. Ed Selfentes. Uh, I'm pretty sure the link will be given below. Thank you very much.